Hey there, weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And today I thought I would demonstrate hem stitching on my new to me Ashford eight shaft table loom. So I have a small little project on here. It is the cocktail napkins from the one of the recent handwoven magazines. And the pattern calls for hem stitching at the beginning and end of each napkin to help secure the fringe. So since it's weaving five napkins and there's a hem stitch at the beginning and the end, I'm getting a lot of practice. So I thought I would show you how I do it, how I learned it. So the pattern calls for um, going over every third end. So I have left a piece of the weft yarn that is about four times the width of my project. A little more. You don't want to run out of hem stitching uh, or weft when you're this far in. Uh, normally you wouldn't weave this much hem or this much of the pattern before you did the hem stitching but because I had spacers in here um, to account for the hat the fringe I decided that I would go ahead and and weave quite a bit and make sure that this was real stable so I could take out the spacers um, because if the spacers are in there it makes the hem stitching a lot harder so we're going to go over every third uh, weft. I'm sorry, we're going to go over every third warp thread. So we're going to take a blunt and needle, a tapestry needle, and thread our extra weft yarn onto it. Then we're going to come under the weaving in three stitches or three threads and up three threads. So we're going to come in right there. Oh, I missed one. The first one's hard to see. No, I, it's that one right there. Okay, so you can see I'm up three picks and I'm in three warp threads. So we'll pull that through, pull it tight. Now we're going to come back around and leave this loop here. And we're going to come back up those three warp threads, but we're not going to go up into the weft. But you'll want to capture that loop. And then we'll just pull that tight and it will tighten up more as we do the next stitch. So now we're going to go back in between the warp threads where we came out and then come up three picks and in three warp threads. Then make our loop, come back under where we came, went under before, three warp threads into our loop, and pull that tight. So now you can see that first one is nice and tight. So we'll do that again. Back in where we came out before up three picks. Did I capture them? Oops, I didn't. There we go. One more. There, up three picks and pull it tight. Create a loop. Come under our warp threads and pull it tight. So, 
in three, up three. And then in three and pull it tight. So you can see it's making little bundles here and it's creating like a little space here uh, in the weft and that's what we want. In three and up three the loop and there we go so we'll just continue on and you can start this um, if you're right-handed uh, typically you'd want to uh, start your shuttle from the right and then do your hem stitch, leave your tail and then do your hem stitching from the right. If you're left handed, you can do it from the left like I'm doing here. Um, in this case, I'm right handed, but I started from the left because my weft or my warp threads are. Um, they're green on this side and white on this side. So, and I started my warp or my weft with white. So I want my tail to end over here so that it matches uh, my fringe because it will become part of the fringe. And I'm going to pull that tail in because it tends to want to slip out. it came out so once you kind of get a rhythm it goes pretty fast goes a lot faster if you're doing it with your dominant hand, too.
Now to do this last bundle, we'll just come around under here and then catch our loop um, just as if we were doing it normally. And then I will take one more and secure it. And then I can cut that off. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you're notified of future videos. Thanks and happy weaving!